It's that time of year again, the holidays are back. The mall was decorated with twinkling lights and the sweet scent of cinnamon and pine filled the air. As we walked through the busy mall, upbeat music continued to play and the children giggled with excitement. But I never dreamed that this festive atmosphere would darken. I pulled into the heart of the mall where a larger-than-life Christmas tree stood, surrounded by a winter wonderland. Parents lined up with excited children waiting in line to sit on Santa's lap and say their Christmas wishes. Here he was dressed in red, and his long white beard almost reached his chest. Her eyes sparkled with a mystical light and her laughter echoed through the air, filling the room with a festive atmosphere. I decided to get in line to see what the fuss was about. As we got closer, we noticed something strange about Santa. His suit looked so worn, as if it had seen better days. Claws were visible on his boots, indicating an unfortunate journey. But I shook it off my shoulders. Maybe he's a real old-fashioned Santa who saw the sooty chimney. Finally it was my turn. I approached Santa Claus with a hesitant smile mixed with excitement and fear. He gestured for me to sit on his lap, and when I did, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. His breath smelled like mint, but underneath was a metallic smell. It was a menacing smell that sent shivers down my spine. So honey, what do you want for Christmas? Santa asked in a voice that seemed too amused for the situation. I stopped for a moment and whispered a wish to myself. Santa smiled and patted my head, but his eyes were on the busy mall around us. He looked around, searching for something beyond the festive exterior. As I stood up, I suddenly realized, this Santa Claus is not here to spread joy and goodwill. He took advantage of the chaos of the festival to stand out and become the perfect disguise for a wandering thief. I decided to follow him cautiously, my curiosity becoming a feeling I couldn't ignore. Santa moved easily through the crowds and blended into the sea of shoppers, his baggy suit hid all the stolen items and his beard completely concealed his identity. I followed him through the maze of shops, keeping a safe distance. Santa Claus has been known to take advantage of the chaotic season by targeting unsuspecting shoppers. He approached the store, paused, then disappeared into the crowd, leaving a trail of stolen jewelry behind. I couldn't believe what I saw. The embodiment of the holiday spirit turned into a master thief who used the holiday atmosphere to his advantage. It was a twisted irony that chilled me to the core. As Santa walked through the mall, his actions became bolder. He stole jewelry from purses and pockets and even stole some luxury items from unsuspecting shoppers. Thanks to the festive music and twinkling lights, he was able to escape without being distracted. My heart raced as I wondered if I should confront Santa or call security. But before I could make up my mind, he disappeared down a dark hallway, out of sight from the mall's main street. I took a deep breath and decided to follow him and put an end to his theft. The halls were very quiet, a stark contrast to the bustling chaos of the mall. I rounded the corner and ran into Santa Claus, who narrowed his eyes when he noticed my presence. Well. It looks like we've got a little spy on our hands. He scoffed, his amused expression turning into a wicked grin. I stammered, trying to find the right words. Santa laughed and the sound sent shivers down my spine. You thought you could beat old Saint Nick, isn't it? So you were a mischievous elf wandering in a place that wasn't yours. At this point, Santa's identity became clear. He was a wolf in sheep's clothing, a criminal who embodied the spirit of the holiday. He approached me and I ran to the side, slightly avoiding his hand. The once friendly atmosphere turned into a tense game of cat and mouse through a maze of hallways. I knew I had to discover Santa's identity, but he slipped through the shadows with the skill of a ruthless and skilled thief. As I approached the exit of the mall, I saw a security guard and waved at him desperately. Realizing he was cornered, Santa made a last-ditch effort to escape. When he got to the door, a security guard caught him and revealed the stolen loot hidden under his Santa costume. The mall was thrown into chaos as onlookers watched in disbelief. What was once a celebration of joy and celebration has been tarnished by the exposure of a criminal portrayed as Santa's favorite figure. Santa couldn't help but smile at his devilish grin as he was led away in handcuffs. The illusion of holiday magic was shattered and a sense of betrayal and anxiety remained.
Once a hub of festive cheer, shopping malls are a reminder that even in the happiest of times, darkness can lurk beneath the surface. It was a cold winter night, the kind that sent shivers down your spine and made you question every step you took. Like a teenage friend with a talent for finding trouble and I decided to go to a Christmas party that was sweeping our town. The place was lit up like a crazy carnival, full of twinkling lights and the smell of roasting chestnuts. We were excited. The whole town turned into a frozen wonderland and we thought we'd have a riot with free snacks along the way. Little did we know we were facing a nightmare while wearing a Santa suit. The festival was packed with people, kids running around like sugar-coated maniacs and there were adults enjoying the festival atmosphere. We decided to go downtown where there was a huge Christmas tree for the holidays. And then I saw him, Santa Claus, or at least someone dressed like him. Now, I'm not talking about your plain and simple Santa. This man looked like he had just woken up from a nightmare. His suit was torn and his beard looked like a ball of thread hanging from his face. We were there to hit anyway, so we approached him ready to play. Hello, Santa. Where are our gifts? Mike shouted, giving me a wicked smile. Santa looked at us with his eyes closed under his hat. Ho oh, ho oh, oh. Did you have a good year this year? I laughed and didn't take it too seriously. Yes of course. What do we have, Santa? I answered while playing the game. Santa leaned towards him, feeling something in his breath. Follow me and I'll give you something special, he whispered, his voice sending shivers down my spine. We were surprised but thought he had a candy cane or something. Santa winked and walked to the edge of the festivities, away from the merry lights and safety of the crowds. Mike and I exchanged strange looks, but decided to follow Creepy Klaus, thinking it was all part of the show. The farther we went, the fainter the light grew, until we were enveloped in a strange darkness that surrounded us. The air grew cold and the distant sounds of festive laughter faded. Oh Santa, where are the cookies? Mike shouted, trying to hide the discomfort in his voice. Santa suddenly stopped and turned towards us. His eyes shone with incredible intensity. That's it guys! Your gift awaits you! He pointed to an old dilapidated building that looked like it hadn't had a single coat of paint in decades. It looked dark, like a haunted house from a horror movie. Again, we exchanged suspicious glances. Although we felt sick to our stomachs, we carried on, thinking it was all part of the twisted vacation experience. As we approached the creaky door, Santa opened it with a rusty grunt. The room was pitch black and there was a strange stillness in the air. Come in! My little helpers. Santa said your presents are waiting for you. His voice was full of fear now. We hesitated, and the hairs on the back of our necks stood up. But curiosity got the better of us and we stepped into the darkness, our eyes struggling to adjust. The door slammed behind us, leaving us in darkness. The air was charged with an uneasy silence, broken only by the distant sound of our footsteps. We felt a cold but wall come crashing down on us. Panic set in when we realized we were in over our heads and playing a dangerous game with the festival old man. Suddenly, a faint light flickered in the distance, revealing the outline of the room. What we saw froze our blood. Rows and rows of hideous toys sat on the shelves, each more twisted than the last. A doll with eyes that seemed to follow us and a teddy bear with a mouth that smiled strangely. The realization hit me like a ton of bricks. It wasn't a Christmas present. It was a trap. We turned to run for the door, but Santa was there, preventing us from escaping on our own. Where do you think you're going? The fun has just begun. Santa was smiling now. His face now turned into a menacing grotesque mask. Fear scares us and adrenaline flows through our veins. We are looking for a way out among the scary toys. The room seemed to twist and turn, a strange maze heading our way. I heard Santa's creepy laugh in the dark, the soundtrack to my nightmares. Apparently he wasn't trying to spread holiday cheer, but there was something much worse. As he stumbled through the darkness, the air grew cold and the shadows seemed to come to life. The walls whispered of unseen horrors, 
and creepy toys reached out as if to draw us into their terrifying realm. We were lost, trapped in a maze of our own making, and Santa Claus was the puppeteer controlling our death. Just when all hope seemed lost, a faint light appeared in the distance. I ran towards him, running in the dark like bats escaping a cave. The door opened before us and we stepped out into the cold night, breathless. The festivities were still in full swing, the merry lights and laughter mocking the fear that had escaped us. I walked out of the cursed building, vowing never to tell what happened that terrible Christmas night. As we rejoined the celebration, memories of the frozen Santa overshadowed the festive mood. Not even the merry carols and twinkling lights could erase the darkness that robbed us of the Christmas spirit. So when scary Santa calls you to his shadow this Christmas, remember this cautionary tale. Not all Santas are gifts and joy. Some are harbingers of nightmares lurking in the dark, ready to transport you into a bright and cheery world of holiday spirit. It was the craziest performance I've ever done. Service Santa Claus for in-store marketing activities. They wanted to increase holiday sales, so why not? We needed money, and who wouldn't want to play the big guy in red, spreading joy and jazz? The costume was so scratchy, and the fake whiskers made the face look like a sleeping cat. But he paid the bills. I greeted the children, granted their wishes, and took pictures with their families. It is not easy. One cold December evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and cast long shadows across the snow-covered streets, I found myself wearing that red suit again. I stood outside the store and called frantically. The night air was clear and the breath that made my heart pound became a mist. People walked by, some laughing, others looking at me like I was crazy. But there was a man hidden in the shadows. He is tall, slim and has a face that has seen better days. He looked at me with eyes that sent shivers down my spine. I tried to shake it off, blaming the cold weather and my overactive imagination. As the night deepened, the crowds thinned and the shadows seemed to deepen. As I was packing and thinking about eating a hot meal and taking a hot shower, I heard footsteps behind me. I turned around and there it was, a creepy shadowy man standing right in front of me. Santa Claus, he muttered, his breath visible in the cold air. You shouldn't be here. You're not real. You are a threat. I was nervous, trying to keep up with Santa's cheerful demeanor. Hey buddy, it's all in fun. Just spreading holiday cheer. But that person was having known of that. He narrowed his eyes and pulled a knife from his jacket. I stumbled backwards, the bells on my Santa boots tinkling with each step. That was not part of the script. It has outgrown fake snow and plastic reindeer. He lunged at me, his blade glinting in the dim light. In a panic, I ran, right where the knife should have stabbed Santa in the stomach. I screamed for help, but the streets were empty and Christmas lights twinkled like mocking stars in the distance. My frost suit hindered my every move and I climbed up. The man mercilessly slashed the air with that cursed blade. I hid behind the trash can my heart pounding. It was not a special holiday. It was a horror show, and I played the lead role. I looked up from my temporary shelter and saw the man circling like an eagle. His eyes were filled with fear and madness. It requires planning and quick progress. I looked around for something to help me out of this nightmare. Then I noticed an empty sign next to a nearby building. I pulled it out with adrenaline and saw a dark alley behind it. I didn't think twice about it. I ran into the shadows, the board still in my hands as a makeshift shield. He followed, his footsteps echoing in the small space. I had to think hard and find a way to change the situation. My eyes darted around, trying to find an escape route or anything else I could use against the knife-wielding assailant. Then I saw it. A pile of discarded Christmas decorations. Broken sticks tangled lights, fallen inflatable snowmen. I picked up a candy cane, the tip of which twisted into a makeshift weapon. My heart was pounding as I prepared to fight. He approached me again. The blade sparkled in the dim light. I shook the candy and touched his hand. 
He flinched, but the knife remained in his hand. It was a fight for survival in a dark alley, with the remains of Christmas my only defence. I dodged his attacks and danced desperately pushing with my candy stick. The alleyways seemed to stretch on forever, with the promise of an escape or a dead end at every corner. I could hear his heavy breathing in time with my heartbeat. I finally saw the entrance. It was a narrow passage between two buildings. Santa Claus ran towards him, his boots tapping on the pavement. The man pursued me as mercilessly as before. When I reached the end, I turned the corner hoping for a miracle. And there was an emergency exit door. I pushed him off and stumbled down the dark hallway. The door closed behind me and I pushed it open, panting like I'd run a marathon. You can't run, Santa. I know who you are. I reached for my phone, fingers shaking as I dialed 911. The operator answered and I screamed my location, situation, everything. The man outside continued to bang on the door, his threats and accusations building into an increasingly terrifying symphony. The police arrived in what seemed like forever, but only a few minutes. They arrested another man in connection with the dangers of the accuser. From a safe distance, I watched my tattered Santa suit stand in stark contrast to the flashing red and blue lights. When the man took it, he looked at me one last time. They're not real, Santa, they're monsters in disguise. I was shivering because of the cold. But I shuddered, fearing that this crazy encounter might reveal something darker beneath Santa's festive exterior. The feeling of celebration suddenly became a thin facade and I couldn't shake the feeling that this person could do something.